The metal plate of 4 mm thickness K is equal to 95.5 watts per meter degree Celsius is exposed to vapor at 100 degrees Celsius on one side and cooling water at 25 degrees Celsius on the opposite side. First stop, the heat transfer coefficient on the vapor side and water side are 14,500 watts per meter square degree Celsius and uh, 2250 watts per meter square degree Celsius respectively determine the rate of heat transfer the second thing the overall heat transfer coefficient and the third thing temperature drop at each side of the heat transfer okay so uh, you know uh, uh, in in all my videos uh, I have been doing this so I'm continuing uh, that particular uh, I'm just continuing that particular topic once again in this video so basically we are again into composite wall but very soon in this video itself we will be uh, going for the uh, heat transfer through composite cylinder okay so here what you can see uh, you can see in this diagram that there are two composite walls uh, means there are two uh, material that when conjointed uh, is becoming a one composite wall okay so here it is it's vapor okay so what's there is the metallic plate of 4 mm thickness the metallic plate of 4 mm thickness here metallic plate of 4 mm thickness is exposed to vapor at 100 degrees celsius so this is basically vapor so it's basically open and it's the uh, it's basically the ambient to this wall okay uh, the uh, the other side of the ambient to this wall okay and the other side is water okay so one side is vapor and the next side is water okay and the cooling water at 25 degrees Celsius on the opposite side the heat transfer coefficients on the vapor side okay the heat transfer coefficient see uh, when you are looking at this particular unit you should be aware whatever whatever be the uh, title of this uh, na uh, means whatever be the name like uh, it could be like heat transfer coefficient or it could be like convective heat transfer coefficient or it could be like anything but if you see this particular unit means watts per meter square degree Celsius or watts per meter square Kelvin then basically he is talking about H okay so H is basically you know that is the heat transfer coefficient from Newton's law of convection or the Newton's law of cooling for the matter okay so this is vapor and this is water and this is metallic plate so it is getting sandwiched between the vapor side and the water side and you know uh, how to make the thermal resistance right so to make the thermal resistance circuit the analogous circuit of the thermal uh, of the uh, resistance in thermal circuit you need to know that this is the HF that is the vapor side resistance so it will be our thermal convection of vapor side then it will be of the material side means the metal plate and then the heat will encounter once again the thermal the convection thermal resistance of the water side so the heat will first of all encounter the thermal resistance of vapor then it will enter into the metallic plate it will encounter the thermal resistance due to metallic plate and once it comes out it will actually encounter the thermal resistance or the convective resistance of water so that is how it's being made 100 degrees celsius heat is getting transferred here okay to 25 degrees celsius so this is how you actually make uh, similar to what you do in the electrical circuits okay this is the solution there okay the thickness of the metallic plate the thickness of the metallic plate is given here so it is uh, like l is equal to 4 mm so you need to convert it into meters okay the thermal conductivity of plate material thermal conductivity of plate material is also given here the temperature of vapor hot fluid the temperature of vapor is also given here okay so it is 100 degrees celsius okay the temperature of water cold fluid the temperature of cold fluid is also given here so you have almost everything the heat transfer coefficients of the vapor side when the heat first of all encounters the first thing that comes in is the vapor side and the vapor side has the heat transfer coefficient of this value it's a good value because it's hot uh, okay and water side and when the uh, when the heat comes out of the metallic uh, when the heat encounters the uh, mm, you know uh, uh, when the heat comes out of the metallic body it actually encounters uh, encounters the thermal uh, convective uh, resistance of the water and the value of the thermal convective resistance of the water is 2250 watts per meter uh, meter square degree celsius okay the rate of heat transfer per meter square and you all know that this is you all know from my previous videos that this is uh, of the format of delta t by rth i have already told you several times that that 
it can be written like this so r th for conduction is l by k a okay and r th by convection is 1 by h a okay so here we will be using almost everything because we have a convection on two sides and we have conduction on one metallic plate okay so here it is so you can see it is convection convection and there is the conduction okay so put all the values here it is 100 it is 25 so it is 1 by h so a has been because you have to calculate per meter square so that's why the a has been taken out so it is like only 1 by h and it is only l by k okay so you can see 1 by h vapor 1 by h cooling water and it is l by k okay so just put all the values here it is 75 and this is the 1 by h this is the 1 by h for the cooling water and this is l by k so just a simple mathematics and you can calculate the rate of heat transfer is this much q is equals to 1.35 into 10 to the power 5 watts per meter square so it is very much simple okay so it's very simple to understand that how you know uh, when you have a convection when you have convection along with the conduction so how you first of all convert it into an, an electrical resistance circuit look at it how you convert it into an electrical resistance circuit and then because it will be in series and something if and, and something if it is in parallel i have already uh, shown that kind of numerical i have solved that kind of numerical in my theory lectures in my theory videos you just go and check it out okay uh, then uh, there there was uh, you know two elements were in parallel so you just uh, you know go for like uh, okay i will uh, uh, I, I will uh, solve it later on okay so there there were you know two things that they were in parallel and uh, and then you go for the equivalent resistance and equivalent resistance will be like 1 by r plus uh, summation of 1 by r you all know okay now the next thing the overall heat transfer coefficient u the rate of heat transfer through a composite system is given by we all know that q is equals to u a delta t okay so delta t will be t hot minus t cold or it could be t s minus t infinity whatever uh, be the condition asked in the numerical okay so uh, now the overall heat transfer coefficient so the overall heat transfer coefficient from uh, from you know uh, what i taught you in the video lectures in my theory lectures basically so i already told you that u is equals to 1 by summation of all the resistance it's the reciprocal of summation of all the resistances so here you will find out so it is like the overall heat transfer coefficient overall heat transfer coefficient will be uh, q is equals to u a delta t as i've already told you here so it will be like this so you already have q you have q by a rather okay from the from the previous thing you have q by a watts per meter square okay just put it here you have delta t so just solve u it's a simple mathematics and it's simple numerical now temperature drop on at each side of the heat transfer temperature drop at each side now what do you understand by temperature drop at each side let's let's see this we know that q is equals to qh if is equals to q of 1 to 2 okay and qcf is equals to 1.35 so what he's talking about actually i already uh, mentioned it several times in my lectures that it's a steady state here also i have mentioned see the q that is entering here it's a steady state it won't change so actually it will come in and it will go out with the same magnitude you just have to take the intermediate heat uh, uh, the parameters so that you can adjust to get the same amount of heat okay i have told you in the uh, in my previous lectures several times so here also we are doing 